Get over here! Words cannot express how unbelievably cute this game is. It's so smooth. It's so cute! Hi, Kirby! He's made out of, like, bubble tape. It's yarn. I know, but it reminds me of bubble tape. <laughs> What's up, everybody? The green scorpion here, joined by... The comic foil. And did you notice that his eyes are actually beads? They are? Yeah. Oh, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> I, I was just thinking about how his face is kind of floating in the nebulous void of, in his body. Of his yarn. Yeah, but beads make sense, okay. Alright, so, um, this is a game that, it, it's just cute. It's absolutely adorable. We're, we're gonna hop into it and we'll explain why we're playing this game in just a moment. Because it's mellow. I was already in love when I saw the Waddle Dees on that, like, creating a save file screen. Please tell me you thought that they were doing the monkey. Oh, they were totally doing the monkey. Mm-hmm. Welcome to Dreamland, a kingdom famous for peace and quiet. It's Though a lot of messed up stuff happens here, too. If you like yeah, sword, no kidding. Later, There's a warship in the sky right there. There's a caped sorcerer going around turning people into yarn. That's right. Yarn. Even the One narrator, day, like, thinks Kirby he's gonna lose you on this premise. Food, <laughs> a bright red tomato on top of a bush. Down the hatch. But when Kirby tried to eat it... A caped sorcerer appeared. My name is... Hey, what are you doing? Stop that! No, that's my magic metamato. Kirby gulped the metamato right down. Just then... A white sock around the sorcerer's neck began to glow. Then it sucked Kirby up. How's it feel to get... Yeah, how's it feel to have the other the shoe on the other foot, Kirby? Well, it's a sock, but yeah. That's why you don't take other people's food, Kirby. This grass feels funny, Kirby thought. It feels like pants. <laughs> Kirby the line that sold the game. I know! His entire body was made out of yarn. Then, he saw a yarn monster chasing a blue yarn boy. Somebody help me! Kirby tried to swallow the monster up. But the air went right through his body. <laughs> Kirby wondered what he should do. Oh my god. Suddenly, Kirby transformed into a car. He drove away with the boy and left the monster behind to eat his dust. That's a weird thing to Apparently, suddenly find out you can that do. That strange metamato gave Kirby the power to seamlessly transform into a car, and who knows what else. I forgot this game has puns. Seamlessly? Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. Ugh. That, that, that's good. Eight what? out of ten. <laughs> Thanks for saving me. What's that? You say you're from another world? Wow. Welcome to Patchland. You just stick with me, and I'll show you the ropes. Get it? Ropes? Uh, what did I get myself into here? <laughs> me and Prince Fluff, we're gonna get along. This is my castle, so feel free to look around here as much as you want. Alright, there, there is a bit of an inch. Actually, no, there isn't. Okay, so we're, we're right into it. Yeah. This game is adorable! So I know you can, like... Just, like, mosey around the overworld and, like, collect stuff. But... Yeah. Um, but this isn't gonna really be a 100% run-through or anything like that. We're not gonna make an attempt to, like, be seriously, seriously crazy good at this game. What kind of attempt are we making, Oscar? This is going to be our Q&A. Yeah. Um, because it's mellow. Because... It is very mellow. It is a very charming, carefree game. Oh, by the way, we're, we're gonna be living here, so, um, oh, yeah, wow. there's stuff to collect that you can, like, actually, like, kind of customize your own living space, so... But he lives in a castle. Surely he has spare room there. Why I mean, do we have to take an apartment? I don't know. So anyway, yeah, like, we're gonna be playing through this game. We're gonna go all casual, all nice and easy, 
and pretty much just gonna be answering questions along the way. I know there is a co-op mode. Um, it's just gonna be Oscar solo for now. Uh, yeah. So that I can focus on the questions as usual. Yeah, we'll see what, what we can do. And yeah, uh, like, in this game, Kirby has a whip. Uh, I forget what's in here. Patch Plaza? Oh, yeah, it's basically a rundown of, like, uh, Trying to get, oh, like collectibles, like that's the Yeah, it's all the, it's all the collectibles and whatnot. And cast? Yeah, like the, like the, Kirby. the characters okay. you've met. Okay. Uh, so far we've only met, uh, Kirby and Prince Fluff. Okay, because we don't know that wizard's name, even though I totally know what that wizard's name is. I've never <laughs> played all the way through this game. I've played through, like, the first world, but I never had this one. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead into Patch Castle, and we're gonna get started. Alright. Uh, do you want to get the ball rolling a little bit before I start the first question? Um, yeah, like, mm, it's it's really, like, pretty self-explanatory, quite literally. All right, so guys, take in the beautiful vistas, um, a great piano score if you can hear it. Oh, absolutely, this game has a beautiful soundtrack. And enjoy some of our, uh, thoughts and feelings on different matters. One more thing, I'm taking today's questions and the next few questions from the leftovers of Mario Golf. But if you have any questions, even if you've asked it before and it hasn't been addressed, please put it in the comments of one of the Kirby's Epic Yarn videos so that I can start collecting them again. Yep, we're going to be uh, answering questions all throughout this playthrough, and it's a rather, like, not necessarily a long one, but it's long enough to, to warrant that we're going to be playing this game and we're going to be answering a lot of questions. So, by all means, go for it, guys. By the way, submarine! You turn into a submarine anytime you swim, right? Yep. Cool. Like, it's actually really cool just like how, like literally, it's seamless, the transformation. Like, like, wow. He, he just has inherent run power, and you turn into a parachute when you jump. Yep. And I think if you press down, yeah, you turn into like a weight. Yeah, because like, yeah, you can't float or anything, but you have this little parachute form. Um, but okay. enough about that. Let's say we get into some questions. Alright, so the first one's gonna come from Royal Name 31 The question is... Um... Would you ever make another top 10 games you haven't played yet, Countdown? That's actually a really good one. I thought about it. We got a chandelier here. I thought about doing it, but I'm not entirely sure, mainly because, like, you know, it's retreading old ground and whatnot, but I have played plenty of games lately that, yeah, I'm pretty sure not a lot of people have played. I don't think I've played enough uh, to, of those types of games 10. to do another one just yet. At least maybe not now. Like... That is an that is an interesting suggestion. I will say, like, I don't think I have enough to make one anytime soon, though. Especially um, because when we do have a weirder game, I feel like it ends up in one of our countdowns. It so really does, because like introducing it to people that way. I mean, how many people do you know have played Darkest Dungeon? Yeah, Next, not not too many in like this particular community. Yeah, like. I, like, I'm pretty sure plenty of people have played Darkest Dungeon, just... Bat and Kaitos. Uh, yeah, Bat and Kaitos is another one. Uh, what else? Um... We talked about Turok one time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, Turok was pretty popular during the, uh, uh, during the N64 days. Yeah, but I feel like the people who watch us are, like, generally, like, one generation younger than us, kind of. Or, like, a few, like, one console generation younger than us. Uh-huh. You're not wrong. Not, I mean, not everybody, and it doesn't matter either way. Mm -hmm. Just... I'm, I'm starting to feel old, guys. <laughs> Alright, so that, that was one question, one stage. Yeah, that was pretty easy, but yeah, like, this game's pretty darn easy. It's, like, we're, we're gonna be playing, breezing through this game pretty casually. Is it true that you can't die? You cannot die in this you game. You just lose beads? You lose, you lose beads. Like, like, this game, for all intents and purposes, is stupid easy. Un unless you want to get everything. Exactly. The challenge they're in, a lot like a lot of, pretty much like... Tr traditional Kirby game. Yeah. The challenge in these games is not complete. Is not winning it. It's completing it. it. It depends where you put your your checkered flag. Exactly. So it it's all about like getting those collectibles. That's where the challenge lies. Said, not that I needed it. I'm Prince Fluff. Ever since Yin Yarn you waited a whole level before telling Kirby his seven name. Pieces. Apparently, Yin Yarn. Can't go anywhere without running into these horrible. But Fluff was interrupted when they were attacked by a huge three-eyed blob of yarn. Ew, gross, stop it! But before the blob could eat Prince Fluff, Kirby transformed and smashed it to smithereens in a most spectacular fashion. Among the little blob bits, there was a shimmering piece of spiraling yarn. That's it. 
That's the magic yarn, Fluff exclaimed. As if this none of the rest of this yarn wasn't magical yarn. already? You well, that's the especially magic yarn. The, magic yarn <laughs> the exact Patrick. kind of magic he needs. I always like this concept, like, how you literally sew the world together. Yeah. Th this game definitely has, like, a great aesthetic. I played uh, Yoshi's Woolly World, which was the spiritual together. successor to this. Mm -hmm. What about the other pieces? I'm a big fan that was of also that a really good game. To find yeah. The rest of them. Kirby, always happy to help, decided to help his friend recover the missing pieces. Uh, same art designer the from both games. Began their journey to stitch Patchland back together. That, that doesn't surprise me in the slightest. I remember, like, watching uh, during uh, one of the Nintendo Directs, like, they actually, like, were talking to uh, the artist about Yoshi's Woolly World when they were, when it was, it's, when it was in development. Yeah. Um, the whole idea for the Yarn Yoshi Amiibos was because she made, like, a Yarn Yoshi and brought it in one time. I know. And that, that... some exec was there and was like, <gasps> Idea! <laughs> Alright, so, what do we have here? Um, I think we can do one other level. Uh, before we can call it a day, because, like, we're still, like, around, like, the ten-minute mark. Yeah. So, why not? All right. Prince Fluff, what an unexpected surprise. Oh, and who might your friend here be? Lord Kirby, you say? He is visiting us from another world, you say? How exciting! My name is Dom Wool, and <laughs> it is my pleasure to make your acquaintance. Lord Kirby is helping you save our beloved Patchland? Oh, that's just wonderful! I am the manager of Quilty Court here. Please come inside for a moment. I insist. Oh, so this is where you're going to learn about decorating your apartment? Yes. Welcome to your new home. <laughs> well, I suppose it's, it's not much to look at just yet. But I would be honored to have one of Prince Fluff's guests stay here. In this empty apartment. <laughs> A proper home must be properly furnished. Please accept this as a gift from me. Feel free to furnish your new place in whatever way you desire. We'll discuss the rent later. Go ahead and enjoy the space. If you have any questions, I'll be around. Now, if you will excuse me, I think I hear one of my other tenants walking by outside. So yeah, we might as well show this off real quick before we head on to the next level. Yeah, so, I think so. yeah. Basically, you can... Th this is just, like, Kirby's home now. At least, like, in Patchland. <laughs> you live here forever. So, you change the layout, you point... Okay, so this is what you have to point at the screen for. Yeah. Uh, so, you saw, like, I got a couple of collectibles, uh... Uh, during the, uh... During yeah, the, got uh, that chandelier. Yeah, so let's go ahead and take this chandelier. Very nice. There you go. Um... Really brings the room together. <laughs> We got a king's throne. Um, that that's that that's I think what we got from uh, him. It looked like he gave us just a regular chair. Eh, maybe I'm wrong. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So we got a normal chair a normal here, so we can put chair. it like maybe right over there. Um, what else we have? Um, do we have anything else? Objects. Toy uh, box. just the royal throne. Yeah, I guess we might as well put it, like, maybe in the middle under the chandelier. It looks nice, you know? You gotta treat yourself like a king, or else nobody will. Certainly not gonna get that treatment from DDD. Nope. Alright, so, here's what I found absolutely adorable. So, once you furnish the place, check this out. Oh. That. Wow. <laughs> it's so cute! <laughs> What's so great about Kirby? Oh. Getting sleepy. <laughs> Look at this man. That is a comfy chair. This game is so charming. It makes me smile every time. My favorite wad of gum. <sighs> All right, Kirby. Enough resting around. We got work to do. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's get into the next question, shall we? Okay. Um. So here's an interesting question coming to us from Dark Force Two One Three. All right. He asks, or she asks. I don't know. How do you get your videos noticed on YouTube? Uh, got a got a internet business question for you here. Yeah, that's actually pretty interesting. Okay, so I started. I think I started in like 2011 uh, when I started doing uh, videos on YouTube. Um, the thing is, like, I didn't when I started out uh, doing YouTube. I didn't necessarily. Uh, 
do anything in like particularly uh, spectacular in order to get my videos noticed. I just did them, if that makes sense. Like, and you kind of fell in with this uh, countdown community, um, more or less on the ground floor. Exactly. It's like uh, I, I did one video, which was my top ten video game heroes. Well, it wasn't. That wasn't the first. Um, that wasn't the first uh, video I ever made. The first video I ever made was actually that uh, mashup between 007 and Mad World because that was a, a school project. That was the first video I ever uploaded to YouTube. Um, but after after that, I was like, okay, so the guys who really inspired me to get into YouTube were Josh Scorcher, uh, the Fiery Joker, and uh, and the Autark of Flame. Who kind of started this whole shebang. Exactly. So um, they were the reason that I got into this. So I was like, hey, I want to do stuff like this too. So I decided to go ahead and like make a countdown. And my first one ever was the top 10 video game heroes. And it kind of just went from there because like after I did that video, a lot of people ended up really, really liking it. And uh, it was nice to see that people really like my video. So I was like, okay, let's do some more. And eventually I did, I started doing a, uh, a, uh, Top 15 Legend of Zelda boss battles. Funny how my second countdown ever was a top 15. But, um. <laughs> yeah, that's a. Ambitious. That's ambitious. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> 10 cannot contain this. And, and, and yet it still. Well, it was one for each Zelda game at the time. Yeah, and yet it still remains to be one of my most popular videos, even today. Um. So I, is there any kind the... of secret to getting people to have watched those videos in the first place, though? Mmm. Like, T like I honestly, mean, I'm sure, I'm sure it, it there are lots of countdowns out there that never get seen. Yeah, honestly, like the best I can say is tell your friends about it. Tell it, tell them, hey, I did this. Like, I want your opinion. Like, and I want to, and I, and I want to get it checked out. Uh, that's like one of the best things you can do is just like get your friends involved. Let them know, hey, you did this cool thing, and eventually, uh, you'll be able to like get a fam. Because the thing is, like, when I when I started it. Or when I started, I didn't do anything in like in particular to really get myself noticed. I just kept doing it. Like that's the best advice I can give. Like if you want to get yourself noticed on YouTube, just start doing it and just keep on going. Everything I read talks about like being consistent with your uploads. Oh, absolutely. Like especially if you're gonna do let's plays, like it has to like you need to do let's plays on a consistent basis. Um, that is very much true. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna be doing a uh, if you're gonna be doing videos like that and like want to like establish a fan base, you're definitely gonna have to like get them going, you know, uh, and like keep keep up with them. But that being said, like don't worry yourself over, hey, like is this good enough, or am I gonna be able to like get a fan base out of this, or is it something like that. Do it because you love it. That that's the best advice I can give. Is like if you're gonna be doing YouTube videos, do it because you love to do it. Because that, that's what I did, and, like, I, I, I... Obviously, I was concerned about the fame and whatnot. Like, I was concerned about, hey, are people going to notice this? But, like, when I started out YouTube, I nearly did it only because I just really, really wanted to. And I really loved doing it. That's the best advice I can give. Uh, my advice would be take a popular YouTuber that you know personally and ride his coattails. <laughs> Gee, I wonder... Uh, start showing up randomly in his videos and then announce that you have your own Let's Plays. <laughs> and then maybe some of his viewership will trickle over to your channel. Which it did. I mean, like, dude, like, in, in all seriousness, though, like, yeah, yeah I, I suppose you can consider that sound advice. But the thing is, like, you wouldn't have gotten noticed, like, as much as you have if you actually weren't good at what you do. Oh, thank you. Which you are. Like, I actually enjoy watching your Let's Plays. Thank you very much. So, that that's pretty much advice from two aspiring YouTubers. I mean, um, how do I get down? Oh, wait, of course. I just go I mean, down you here. jump. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, just do it because you love it. Keep on, keep keep up with it if you end up liking it and just basically go from there like eventually you will get an audience because like eventually like as long as you keep on doing it and you do it long enough people are gonna notice and if you get your friends involved then they'll tell their friends and their friends will tell their friends like it, it's basically things like that all right cool so, so overall that was, I, I like that question that was good okay here's a question to you from uh, Yim 
I always have trouble saying the username. Yimzy, uh, Yasmin. Uh, oh. Uh, See, I, I always thought it was called, like, Sydney or something. Yeah! Um, I know that her, well, you are a tank. Yes. Oh, well, right, that, okay. Well, she asks, um, if they were to remake one of the GBA Fire Emblem games on the 3DS, which one would you want it to be? Gee, I wonder! Well, I mean, I don't know, because you got Sacred Stones that, like, like, I mean, Blazing Sword is so good already, and you got Binding Blade that, like, this would be the chance for it to come to the States. That is true. And Europe. Did it come out in Europe? I don't think it did. I don't know, But, actually. like, a chance Ow. for people to play it minus, minus, uh, emulation. Um, yeah, like... Or Sacred Stones just to, like, fix the difficulty curve and stuff like that. Which is gonna be quite the trial when we eventually do it, isn't it? Yeah. That that's that game is definitely gonna see a lot more casualties than Blazing Sword ever did. Um, other Fire Emblem Let's Play is coming eventually. Yep. Um, so look forward to those. Uh, this Waddle D and that blasted rocket. Get out of here. Uh, would you still say Blazing Sword though? Um, I would say Blazing Sword, but that's that's bias. Uh, like, honestly. If you want me to, like, if you want me to answer from a purely, like, intelligent market and well, no, a, and a marketable would, standpoint... Which one would you want? Okay, the one I would want is, uh, Blazing Sword. The one I think would be a smart choice would be, uh, Binding Blade. See, personally, I would want Binding Blade because I want an easier way to play it. Because I don't really like emulating. Yeah, no, I agree with you, frankly. <laughs> I like that transformation sequence there. Yeah, it was good. And I believe that's all we have for today, because that was the end of that level. Very good, very good. Uh, uh, uh. Nope. Little Wheel of Fortune action there. And we got a patch. Very cool. This is a sweet game. Alright, so, thank you guys for joining us for the first episode of Let's Play Kirby's Epic Yarn. Honestly... I'm I'm getting a I'm getting a much better vibe from this game than the other games we tried when it came to freaking the uh, freaking uh, Q and A. We actually tried to Q and A with two other games after Mario Golf, and both of them just just did not feel right. No, the I, I won't tell you what they are because I don't want you to be like disappointed by. Yeah, that's actually right. I was gonna what, I was gonna say what they were, but I guess like it's best if we don't. It was just they were both a case of like too much going on on screen that we couldn't focus on questions. Well, the first one was. The second one was just no opportunity. Yeah, more or less. Mm -hmm. And if it's something where you're, like, always reading something or, you know. Exactly. So, but no, like, this game definitely fits. Because the thing is, how, like, Mario Golf just, like, is perfect for that kind of thing. And, oh, I never even noticed that. Hello. Okay, never mind. It, it just goes back down. But uh, anyway, yeah, like, Mario Golf just fits, like, really fits for a Q&A because it's very, oh my god, jump rope! Okay, it's very, like, uh, casual, you know? And this game, I feel, is going to do us justice with on that department because it is a very casual game. It's yeah. easy, it's relaxing, and we can just go at our leisurely pace. Leisurely sounds good to me. All right, then. So, thank you guys for joining us, and we will see you next time. Kirby's, uh... Just standing on water there. The idle animations for Kirby in this game are absolutely adorable. Everything about this game is just adorable, man. I, I'm, I'm a sucker for cute. I'm, yeah. a very, I'm very much a sucker for cute. I felt that. Get it? <sighs> We're back. It's, it's fine. We're back. It's gonna be okay. <clears throat>